Sometimes you just gotta make a bite. Oh, there he is. Look at that. Great big one. Ooh, ooh. Mm, this spot's gotta have fish. I ah, got him. Good one, boy. Good one. Nice fish. <laughs> that did not take a lot. <laughs> All fish are creatures of their local habitat, living lifestyles according to their natural surroundings. Water clarity plays a big part in fish location and feeding strategy. In clear water lakes, sight is at a premium. Fish react to baits they see at long distance, often studying them up close and personal before committing to bite or strike. In dark or dingy waters, however, sight is much reduced and other senses rise to the forefront. Sound and vibration alert fish to the approach or presence of potential food. Fish then instinctively strike what they sense to be an approaching meal, rather than seeing for sure what's on the menu. Given these diverse feeding strategies, local environment and water clarity dictate proper technique. For example, the clearer the water, the deeper and more finicky fish-like walleyes are likely to be, and the more finesse you need to make them bite. Got it. At the opposite extreme, when dense weed cover forms a jungle fortress for largemouth bass, finesse goes out the window. Toe-to-toe, -to -toe, battering ram tactics are required for bass reaction Ooh. and extraction. Well, that fish is this enormous. is big fish fishing at its best. Today, on the edge, we go deep water jigging for walleyes in clear water environments. We're adding live bait to enhance a jig's natural fish attraction makes all the difference between a difficult bite and getting it right. I got him. Oh, that's Then good. we probe deep within the weedy layers of largemouth bass, penetrating a dense overhead canopy of milfoil with heavy sinkers and large soft baits. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. when bass are in the thick of things, you have to get down to business if you're gonna get bit. You know, you want big fish, truly big fish, and this is what you're doing here is big fish fishing. Big baits, fished right, in big fish water with big fish equipment. You got there you go, Ooh, good look. Ooh. Good look right, baby. <laughs> Shh. I got him, okay. Yeah, you know, people travel to Minnesota from all over the world to do what Tom and I are doing today. Whacking walleyes. Let me get that. Just whacking walleyes. Oh, that's a pretty fish. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take her. Oh, we'll take, take her, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Swing her this and way. Here's your fish, Buck. I got her. I got her, Tom. Let me get that hook out of the corner of the neck there. there you know, people travel, like I was saying, from all over the world to come to Minnesota and catch walleyes like this. Some of the best lakes in the country are here in Minnesota. Names like Malak. Leech, Cass, Winnie, Red Lake, Rainy Lake, Lake of the Woods. They're filled with fish like this. And in Minnesota, walleye is king. You know, that's our state fish. And uh, to catch these fish consistently, especially on clear water lakes, you gotta be using live bait. The right live bait on the right ribs at the right time, and you whack fish. So what came first? 
bait shops trying to sell live bait to anglers, or anglers looking for places to buy live bait. That's easy. The demand for live bait created an industry to provide for its purchase and use. Live bait is popular because it's easy to use and it works, especially in deep, clear lakes where the local habitat dictates using stealthy finesse presentations to fool walleyes into biting. Many North Country walleye waters have large areas of sand and rock bottom surrounding the deep basin. Walleyes prowl for food in relatively open water. Their exceptional eyesight, both day and night, makes walleyes deadly although cautious predators. Clear water enlarges their strike zones, enhancing your ability to entice them from afar. But once your lure or bait draws close enough for final inspection, if it isn't real, it isn't a meal. Make too much commotion and walleyes may sense your presence and be long gone before your bait approaches within striking distance. Hasta la vista, baby. You know, the body of water we're on is really clear. You can see these fish coming up 15 feet down. You see them shaking their head like this. When you're in clear water environments like this, this is where live bait truly shines. These fish can see any flaws in your presentation. You know, the, the light line deal, uh, uh, and they really are tuned into live bait. Now, in darker, dirty water, uh, inside weeds or something like this, where the fish got a lot of cover, artificials will shine. So, I, I mean, there's a time and a place for live bait, and this definitely is one of them. These fish are really a nice average in here, Tom. Yeah. Really running a nice average. Look at that. People come from all over the world to catch fish like that, man, oh, yeah. and they love it. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, I mean, I, it, it just doesn't get any better than this. I mean, this is, this is good stuff, good stuff. Tom, I know you keep tabs of how many walleyes you catch with your party in the season. How many fish did you put in your boat this year? You know, Al, I like to keep tabs, and I'm right at 28, 2900 fish for the season, and, and it's been a great year. I've had a phenomenal year, and, uh, you know, this is what brings people back to Minnesota and brings back people to me to take them out fishing and enjoy the experience. Tom, a quick question. Out of the 2,800 or so walleyes that you put in the boat this year with your parties, how many of them came on artificials versus live bait? And then out of the live bait, divide the percentages up for me, nightcrawler, leeches, minnows. You know, when you look at the percentages, I, I'd have to say that 25% come on artificials and 75% come on live bait. Now, you know, you break it up and it, you take that 75% and put it into 100%, and I'd say 50% is on uh, minnows, you know, which would be any sort of shiner, chub, or whatever, and the rest of it would be, you know, crawlers and leeches. But then as the, uh, the oh, unbelievable. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Got another one. It's one of those days. Have you ever had one of those days where you don't catch anything and the other guy in the boat is whacking him? That's what's happening. He's cleaning my clock with another big fish. As a busy walleye guide who must produce fish no matter the conditions, Tom relies on different forms of live bait, including various minnows, leeches, and nightcrawlers. Today, for example, he brought along a healthy selection of three types of minnows. The first, large red-tailed chubs, are classic fall walleye baits. Yet because his years of guiding experience have shown walleyes to be very selective at times in regard to both minnow size and species, he included smaller rainbow chubs and spot tail shiners as well. Today, small rainbows seem to be the hot ticket. Tomorrow it could be a completely different bait. Oh, ah. that feel good. Oh. Oh man, I'll tell you what, it's a hurt that I love at times. With a bad shoulder, I'll take it every time, every time. I love, I, I love the boom, boom, boom. I love it when you net fish for me, Bubba. I, just kind of, I, I'm being your first mate, and I'm going to charge you for this when I'm all done. Man. <laughs> You've had a lot of years on the water, you and I, I'll tell you. A wide array of live bait jigs, rigs, hooks, kits, and sinker systems meet the special needs of walleye anglers. 
I got them. Okay. Today, Al and Tom are fishing with jigs, a simple delivery system for live bait. Jig heads come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes to suit all walleye jigging conditions. One of Al's favorites is the VMC Hammerhead Jig, which has a unique short shank hook that holds the minnow tight to the jig head. It's precision balanced for both casting and dragging presentations. Hammerheads are also designed to be fished with optional quick strike trailer hooks when reluctant walleyes barely nip at larger minnows like chubs and suckers. Using the correct head weight is critical in any jigging situation. Heavier jigs increase drop speed and accentuate up and down jigging motions. Lighter jigs have slower drop speeds, impart subtler motions to live bait, and are especially good for gentle swimming retrieves. You know, as a guide, and this is my office back here, and this is where I do my business. I can watch my customers from here. But it's really key with, you know, my Minn Kota Vantage that I can actually hands off, you know, control the boat, I can jig, I can watch people, and I don't have to have my hand on the motor all the time. And, you know, in northern Minnesota, we do a lot of back trolling and we do a lot of control from the back of the boat. So, you know, having a, a motor like this Vantage 101 is just really key for me. Follow the arrow on top, you've got the dial for speed here. It doesn't get any better than that. Finally. I've been doing a good job of netting today. He's got another good fish. You know, it's amazing how little things can make such a difference. We're sitting on a lot of fish. He is annihilating me. He's getting fish after fish after fish, and I cannot get bit. Have you ever had a day like that? When you get tuned in, little things are so important, and uh, uh, there is always a way to catch a fish. I believe that. There's no such thing as the fish aren't biting, and I'm seeing it again today for about the 150th time in my fishing career. <laughs>Big boy? Yeah, it feels pretty good. It feels good. It feels good. It feels good. I got it. feels good. It feels good. Yeah. Oh! Here's the right stuff. Okay. Oh, Jer. Look at her. Look at her size. She's coming out again. That's oh, here she fish, comes. Man. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh man. Hell. What a tanker, man. Oh, what a tanker that is. All right, I'm going to mark this box. Yeah, punch her in. Oh, come here, Mama. <laughs> oh, boy, she's a big fish. Woo! Oh, how's that baby look, huh? Man, oh, man. Jeremy and I are doing something we really, really enjoy doing. It's the peak of summer. We're flipping northern milfoil, and we're throwing soft baits and jigs. And this is the time of the year to do it in this stuff for really, really, really big bats. Man, that was a big fish, Jer. <laughs> you know, milfoil is really a unique a weed. It grows in many parts of the country. You find it in lakes, rivers, reservoirs. Hey, in my home state of Minnesota, it's actually a problem on many bodies of water. And uh, it just choked out the natural vegetation. However, no matter where you fish, 
anywhere in the country, if it's summertime and you've got good beds of milfoil, I guarantee you, you got some of the biggest bass in a lake living in them. If you've ever been to a lake that appears as though it has endless acres of milfoil, you've probably asked yourself, where do I start? It's a good question because tackling massive milfoil flats is intimidating. Here's how we do it. We begin by identifying the biggest structures the lake has on a map. We look for points, pockets, or distinct contour changes on those structures. Then it gets down to the dirty work, fishing it. If the area you selected on the map has lots of moss or algae growing on the milfoil, it's usually best to pass. There may be bass here, but it's nearly impossible to fish through without hanging up. Finding clean milfoil is the key. Then feel with the lead and watch your sonar for composition changes in the bottom. It's amazing how much bass love hard bottom in these milfoil beds. Always mark the spots on your GPS because sooner or later the bass will show up there. That braid on that one? No, this is floral. Oh, good, good. There we go. That's a big one. That's a big fish, man. You can tell it's a big Ooh, one. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that sucker, huh? <laughs> you said when you set that one up, I could tell. Just hung up on those weeds. Oh, oh, look at that. Nice big. Are you dead on a <laughs> nice big bass on that big mole, man? Look at the size of that puppy. Huh? <laughs> This game is all about big and tough. Milfoil is hard to penetrate and it's hard to pull bass from. So we like fishing this stuff with Texas Rig Soft Plastics. My go-to size on the lead is a one ounce bullet sinker. For the soft baits, the Trigger X Hodad, Big Mo, and 10 inch Hammerworm are staples. They make their way through the milfoil well and their large profile gets the attention of big bass. For the rod and reel, we like using heavy, fast action rods. Today I'm fishing with a 6 foot 10 inch Quantum Energy PT rod and a smoke reel that has a 7.3 to 1 gear ratio. This is huge for picking up slack and getting tight on the fish after they bite. For the line, we've got two options. I fish with fluorocarbon a lot. I like how it handles, how it transmits a bite on slack, and it's got great abrasion resistance. Plus, I'm comfortable with it. I use 20 pound suffix castable fluorocarbon in the sparser milfoil. When we dive into the thick stuff, braid is a must. Braid cuts cover and is necessary to pull the fish from the thickest stuff. Suffix 832 is an amazing braid. It's smooth, it's quiet, it cuts the cover well and delivers great accuracy for casting into pockets. Today we're spooled up with 40 pound tests in this matchup. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh yeah, I saw that yeah, man. He came back, I wasn't sure. Good fish. Ooh. Yeah, good fish. Yeah, you know, I wasn't sure <laughs> on that. I came through that bed. Whoa. I came through that bed. Throw in there on that same I'm on thing, it. Jerry. You, you on it? Yep. Okay. This is not for the faint of heart, this kind of fishing. Yeah, you know, it isn't real, real fast today. Yeah, you know, some days you pull out on these spots, you could pull in one of these beds like this, and it's five fish like this on five casts. You got yours? There he is, Il. Ooh. She looked, Ooh. She looks right, baby. <laughs> she looks right. Ooh. Right back in that car. Oh, Al, big, big bass, big man. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's mentally overwhelming. I'm so excited to catch these big bass. Oh, man, look at the size of this baby. Ooh. Oh, oh, huh? <laughs> oh, big bass. I tell you what, fishing for bass like this is never an easy game. It's not. You got to work at it. It can be hard, but the results are definitely well worth it. When you're fishing for an hour or so and you haven't got bit, you're picking weeds off, picking weeds off, you start to get down and you want to move and do something else, keep working hard. I promise you, if you stick with it, you keep your head in the game, these big babies will end up in the boat. Hard work pays off with big bass. If you want to become a lean, green bass and machine, Bass, the Weed Factor, details how to match your lures and tactics to weed depth, 
type and thickness. It's part of our Angling Edge instructional DVD collection, available at anglingedge.com. Hey, this is an issue of Decision Magazine. It's a Billy Graham publication. And there's a great article in here. I want to read parts of it to you. It starts off by saying, do you feel like you can't pray anymore? Have you ever felt as if you run out of prayers? Then it goes on to talk about the story of Elijah. It says Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He ran away to collapse under a broom tree. I don't know what a broom tree is, but the Bible says a broom tree. And when he got there, he says, God, I'm tired of this. I'm doing all your work. Nobody's listening to me. I want to die and go to heaven. I'm done with this. Then the author goes on to say, it's been my experience that when you run into fear, you can run out of faith in a hurry. Fear paralyzes you. Good words. Doubt is faith in distress, and it's very hard to pray when you're doubting God. The Bible says anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. I love that. She goes on to say, the broom tree experience introduces us to a new way of praying. It's not verbal praying, but rather total abandonment of ourselves in despair at God's feet. It's a silent scream for help. Sometimes we can't even shout at God. We are spent. When you run out of prayers, God still hears you, even though no words are formed. God looks at you and reads the language of your longing. Great. At that moment, you are the prayer. So be content just to be a desperate prayer under your particular broom tree and wait and see what happens. God gives more grace, more help, more joy, more hope, and more strength to all of us in our weakness than he does when we're strong. I love that. Hey, from all of us at the Edge, you have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I sure want to take an opportunity to thank all our sponsor partners for making this show possible. And if you like what you see, let them know and support them. For more information, check us out at anglingedge.com, Facebook, or the YouTube channel. Hey, thanks for watching.